I want to thank everyone for being here. Um, first of all, it was a solid team win uh, Saturday for our program against another SUNY school out there in the state of New York. I was very proud of the way our uh, coaches and our players uh, prepared all week and then obviously respond, you know, after week one against Pitt. Uh, where things didn't quite work out the way we wanted to. And I think it was indicative about uh, the first play of the game. You know, it was really a, uh, a great start, as you know. Uh, Coach Wood, my offensive coordinator, and our entire offensive staff did a great job uh, dialing up that play. And, uh, you know, as I said, 19 seconds, you're up 7 to nothing is a great way to start um, at home, first uh, home game. Uh, we had a tremendous uh, crowd. The environment here uh, was excellent. Uh, you know, our true blue section uh, came out and uh, was high energy. You know, I really appreciated the, you know, the people and, um, you know, our fans and our family and our friends, you know, coming out here and supporting UB football and these guys. Um, and to my right here is Richie. You know, Richie is a, a defensive lineman. Uh, he's done a great job, uh, you know, really ever since I first came in here. And uh, we, we have a shared passion, you know, it's football. And uh, Richie's an old wrestler too. So uh, we're also, uh, you know, seeing his uh, work that doesn't quite get recognized, uh, but the work he's doing uh, inside, occupying defensive linemen and doing a great job has really allowed our linebackers uh, to really excel. And uh, this past week, um, we couldn't be more proud. Uh, Khalil Mack was named not only linebacker, a national linebacker of the week, but the defensive player uh, of the week uh, by College Football Performance Awards. And also he was named uh, the Mac East player uh, of the week. And, you know, it's work done by Richie and the 10 other guys that are out there uh, that really allow uh, our players uh, to excel individually. Um, but all of our attention and focus is now on Ball State. You know, we open up uh, Mac play uh, on the road at Muncie. You know, Ball State had a, a tremendous uh, game one, you know, against Indi Indiana and beating them. It was a tremendous uh, victory for their team. And then this week was a little different story. They played uh, South Florida. Uh, so we know this is a, a very good football team. And uh, we'll, they'll have our full attention. I like the way our kids uh, came out yesterday. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, a great, intense Tuesday today. So with that, I'll open up with any questions. Jeff, you talked some specifics on, on Ball State, like what it is offensively, you know, when he's kind of a dual threat at quarterback, and what, what do you see as some of the keys? Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's a very solid football player, good decision maker, um, Keith Wenning. And, you know, I think the thing that you like about a good quarterback is he uh, he's poised in the pocket. You know, he manages the game well. He's a good decision maker. Uh, if you look at the first game that they played against Indiana, they really dominated the second half. I mean, they did a real nice job, and, and it was a lot because of, of, of the way uh, Keith played. So, you know, he's uh, somebody that we have to do a great job. But he's got, uh, he's got a couple talented running backs. He's got a nice group of receivers, offensive line. You know, I mean, they're a, you know, they're a solid group, and uh, I think they're managing uh, what their abilities are quite well as a coaching staff. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a great test for our kids being on the road against their offense to stop them. Coach, do you think it's not a good thing for your club to have a back game, you know, early and stuff late, five, six weeks into the season, you know, four month conference, you get into it in the third week, and especially coming off the big one uh, Saturday, if you guys can plus some. Uh, for you guys, have you got a national league conference game this week? Well, I think the big plus is coming off a great win. And, uh, you know, I really, uh, regardless of when these games uh, take place, you know, I don't really put a lot of stock in when those games are being played. You know, I mean, we have to go play Ball State. That's what it is, and our kids understand that. Um, and as I told them, you know, the best team's going to win the MAC. The best team is going to win this league. Um, not the team that has good players. It's the best team. And, you know, I really like the way our kids uh, really focused in, you know, this past week and, you know, and, and coming together. And, you know, we expect to keep building on that, um, you know, each and every week. And this, this is uh, where that game lies. And, you know, Temple already played a game. And, uh, you know, the key is if you get a, a key win early in the MAC, you know, it sits for about a couple of weeks. You know, that's, that's the key. So, you know, we've got to play at our very best, prepare our kids, and, and they'll be ready to play. Jeff, how much did a win make a difference in what you're trying to coach, the attitude of the team, the messages that you give to the team? You know, what's it like to be able to do that coming off a win like you are now? Well, 
as I said, uh, well, I was long overdue. Uh, you know, we know there's there's uh, nothing that uh, you know can and create more confidence and more and and better morale with your program and your kids um, because you need to have that uh, that confirmation, that sense of accomplishment because these kids put a lot of time and energy and work into getting ready. And same thing with our coaches, you know. So this is a different team. And as I said, this is a different team. This is a, a, a new year, a different team. And I like where they are. Um, and uh, I just love the way they responded. You know, they had to go compete against Stony Brook, who had UTEP down majority of the game uh, last or the week before. And, you know, the way we ended defensively with holding them to seven points and us putting up 35, um, you know, that was a solid win, as I said, for our program. And we need those moments. Uh, so they understand that their work is going to be rewarded if they go out there and prepare the way they're capable and then go play together as a team. And we saw that, and we got to do our part as coaches. So it, it was a great uh, it was a great feeling, And uh, but you only get 24 hours to enjoy it, and now we move on to Ball State. Coach, even after the game, some of the guys talked about how they knew last year you know, some of the MAC opponents, they left something on the table, and they're looking forward to seeing these teams again. And showing them who they think Buffalo, what they think Buffalo football really is. Do you get that sense this week? Absolutely. I saw it yesterday. You know, we had a great team meeting, and, um, you know, we really laid, um, you know, what we need to do. And as I, you know, as I said, uh, the most important thing is that we become a stronger team. We become uh, closer together, that when we are out there, that there's 11 guys looking at one another, selling out for one another. Uh, every play, every player, um, you know, and I think that's a great model to, um, you know, to consistently bring to the attention of these young men, these young men. And I think our team is really uh, starting to show that. But, you know, again, it's still early in the season and uh, we still have things to improve upon. And certainly we look forward to the challenges that this game uh, on the road at Ball State uh, presents to us. So I know they're excited about it and, and we know what happened last year. Uh, with this game against Ball State. So uh, we've got to bring uh, everything we have. And, you know, we've been very healthy. That's been another positive. I mean, we're getting guys back. Uh, so I know we've been training them the right way, and, and, and they believe in what we're doing. And you heard it again after the game. The players believe in the leadership and the coaching as we believe in them. And together we're going to continue finding a way uh, to, give us, to give it everything we have to win these games. Rich, do you, uh, you, do you buy into any of that? I mean, that was a pretty – ugly loss last year to Ball State. I mean, is that still burn with guys in this locker room? Does that provide any motivation at all for you guys going into this game? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, every year we want to get better as a team, as a defense, as an offense. Um, so we will just look at the corrections we need from last week and get better and look at the film of what they want to try to do to us and uh, just play technique, be consistent, aggressive, and violent, and do what we're, co do what we're uh, taught. Which is there a sense of, I mean, there's always an urgency with any conference game because there's not a lot of room for error, you know, when you add it all up by the end of the year. But the fact that this one's kind of in the middle and that you don't play another conference game for two weeks, you know, and how it can affect the team's psyche. You know, I, I, you had referenced it before. It'd be great to win this game and, and then have two weeks, you know, knowing you're 1-0 instead of, instead of the alternative. So because of that, is, do you feel a sense of urgency with this game? Um, it is a commerce game. It's a very important game to us, um, but every game is important. Um, we can't we can't take a team. We can't be more prepared for one team than another. We have to be prepared for every team equally and just go out and play our best every game. Richard, do you get the sense that teams are paying attention more to your linebackers as well as the front three this year? It's uh, no coincidence. Obviously, Khalil Mack gets the honors. He's made three fumbles this year. You guys have been very aggressive to the football and trying to force turnovers. Do you get the sense that teams are trying to figure out what they're supposed to do up front with you guys? Um, kind of. Um, Khalil's a great player. He makes great plays. And so does Steve and Gordon and our linebackers with Lee, Fred, and uh, and uh, Scott Pettigrew. So we, the teams are going to try to attack us um, and run away from Khalil a little bit and attack him and do whatever they can to stop him from making big plays, and that's when everyone else just needs to step up and make the big plays and do, do their job. Can you run away from Khalil? <laughs> or is this pursuit such that we saw the other yeah, He's a great player. He's, he's all over the field. Do you feel 
feel any sort of pride with Khalil winning the, um, the performer of the week? Oh, absolutely. Um, that's, that's a great honor to our, our defense and uh, our front seven, and hopefully uh, it continues. Are there, are, is there any, sometimes, some of the plays that he makes, even when you're out there and you kind of notice, I mean, are you even surprised sometimes at some of the things that he's shown his ability to do so far? No. I've, I've been around him for two years now, and the things that he's shown me, and through all of our hard work, our practices over the summer, spring ball, um, nothing really surprised me with him anymore. He's all over the place. Some good competition would seem amongst the defensive line. We see guys like Colby Way and Wyatt Cahill and Christian as well. well you know, is, is practice just as competitive? Obviously not. You're, you're going towards different goals, but is it a pretty competitive practice? Yeah. I mean, we all want to make each other better um, as as a player. That's uh, that's our big goal, just to make each other better. Coach Jabby has done a great job with teaching all like our fundamental t our fundamental techniques and uh, just getting better as a player. Have yeah, any of those guys been a surprise? Like when you look at you know what Wade's done, he's done a couple of sacks already. But I think they're on 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 uh, on track in terms of their development, and that's what I like because they've put a lot of time and energy into it, and they're very competitive. Colby Way, Christian Sicoli, it's great to have those guys. And then what it does is it 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 demonstrates that these uh, they, these older players like Richie Smith and Stephen uh, do a great job in mentoring them. You know, I go out there every day and I walk around to every single position every single day and I see the interaction uh, that these older players uh, are, are having with these younger players. And they're building that pride and that sense of belief that is so important to be uh, at the level. And when you get those guys in the game and then they make those plays. I mean, Wyatt Cahill, uh, you know, had two pass breakups and, you know, Kobe Ways had some great plays out there and Sacoli's playing well. Um, it makes you feel good. That, that that unit is really coming together and demonstrating how they fit into Coach Inge's scheme and our scheme uh, with the 3-4. Jeff, is there something different about the way Khalil was playing this year? I mean, he seems to have found even a higher level than he was last year. Did he change something? Is it just maturity? What, from a coaching standpoint, what's making him a better player? Well, I think the way he trained, uh, you know, Coach Duvall, our strength conditioning coach, has done a tremendous job, you know, and, and also I think, uh, you know, as you know, he and Bo are really close. And, you know, Bo, there's nobody working harder than Bo Oliver. And, you know, I think when you start seeing a very close uh, a teammate like that, the two of them are, uh, they challenge each other to competitive greatness. So they bring the best out of each other. And I think uh, that has served well for Khalil. And uh, he knows that uh, there's also room for improvement, you know. He's not satisfied. I mean, we see plays that, you know, and that's the beauty of it. He wants to be the very best every snap. Uh, he's hungry. I mean, this is a, you know, this is, these guys are very passionate uh, about becoming great competitors and his results. You know, it's kind of fuel in his fire. But I've seen him work. I've seen this young man. He has been blessed with a lot of uh, God-given uh, uh, skill. And uh, he's starting to show that, you know, he can go out there and, and compete and uh, make some great things happen for our defense. Richie, you've played a lot. I mean, you're talking 38 games, I think it's said in the notes, most games played by a defensive player on the roster. Um, I guess the question that comes up every year is reflecting on where UB football has come uh, and things of that sort. You know, what, what are you taking into your senior year here? Um, that we're just a team right now. We're, we're meshing together as a team very greatly um, we just we we um, we push each other everyone in the weight room yesterday we were pushing each other we uh, we had a great workout yesterday um, we're just coming together as a team we're a lot better this year and uh, we're a lot closer Richie was there any doubt in your mind you were going to play football in college instead of wrestle just... football is my first love uh, wrestling I did to kind of help me stay in shape for football and uh, but we're still, like, nationally ranked or something yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, but it just—it was just something that it helped me grow as a football player and as an athlete. Um, and it just—I I saw that it, I needed that, and it just helped me become a better football player. So there was, there was no doubt. No, there's nothing. Did, did you? I, mean, I you had scholarship offers. I'm assuming it's a wrestling. Yeah. 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 So, so where? Uh, a bunch of uh, Hofstra was a wrestling school in Ohio State. Jeff, um, what, what's, what have you been able to take from the two Ball State games? Obviously, dramatic differences in, in their win and in their loss. And how has that 
help you kind of understand how they may be different under a new coaching staff than they were when they played here last year? I think you know Coach Lembo is a, you know is a very good coach and um, and their team has responded you know certainly to get a, a a victory against a Big Ten program your first game first time head coach but you look back at uh, you know his his coordinators have been with him you know for a while and I think that consistency and continuity in uh, your staff it may be a new staff at Ball State but this is a group of guys that have worked together. You know, and that's a big difference. You know, just like myself, with you know, when I when we made moves, uh, it wasn't so much that you know, it was the fact that you know we came in new at new places, but we were the same group of coaches. You know, because behind the scenes, that is significant uh, because we're all on the same page. You know, which you can see that. Um, you know, you you catch a, a South Florida at home. Uh, breaking the top 25 after a big win against Notre Dame, uh, that's that's a tough that's a that's a heck of a ball club when you watch South Florida. They're talented and they're well coached, and I think you know it, it just it, it caught them. Uh, you know, in turnovers. Let's face it. I mean, it doesn't matter uh, who you play. If you turn the ball over, uh, it you're going to struggle. Win it. Period. End of story. There are a lot of programs right now that are not uh, where they want to be because of the turnover factor, and we've been, you know, uh, relatively solid in that, comp in that, uh, you know, in that uh, uh, category. So, you know, we need to do a great job taking care of the ball on the road. We need to establish a physical mentality in running the ball, and uh, you know, and I feel our defense, you know, again, you know, will continue to play uh, consistent and aggressive and violent football as they've demonstrated. And that's why I like the way we match up against this football team this year. You've had some important games uh, when you were at Central Michigan, outside the MAC as well. Is there such a thing as MAC pride when you hear, uh, you know, the Toledo and Ohio State game last week, uh, Ball State and Indiana, and now this week there's a lot of talk about well, Boise State has to look out for Toledo and Wisconsin going into Northern. Is there any sense of even though they're your rivals, hoping they pull out a W? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I would say this, okay, the Mac is uh, greatly improved, and uh, we know that. And it's been evident in the first two weeks. Um, and, and you just cited one team, you know, Toledo against Ohio State. We see Northern Illinois against Kansas and so on and so forth. So, you know, we know. And then here's a team we're playing that won a, a Big Ten matchup. So, you know, we know there's, there's great talent in this league and great coaches, and we've seen that. Uh, and – you know, for me personally, my focus is 100% on, on what I can control as a head football coach and these young men uh, that are under my leadership. And so, you know, the biggest thing is you do take pride, you know, at this level. You do, absolutely. I take great pride in being in the Mid-American Conference and representing this great university amongst all the other uh, great universities in this league. And you see it with 15 players that played in the Super Bowl this past year. And one of them came out of Buffalo and won the whole thing. So we know we have talented uh, players in here, uh, well coached. And, uh, you know, that's why you go play those nine league games to see where your program uh, sits in regards to their development. Uh, but at the, at the same time, uh, there's nothing more important than us to go on the road and, and get after Ball State. How would you grade your defensive effort to this point and against the run? You know, I think when you look at, um, uh, you know, the overall uh, outcome is more the production. You know, you can you can run the ball, you know, goal line to goal line, but it's still about putting points on the board, okay? And at the end of the day, that's what I evaluate. You know, how many points are we giving up? And, uh, you know, how are we responding in terms of sudden changes and adverse situations? Um, you know, you look at the first game, you know, and, and certainly I know our defense came out of there feeling like, you know, we did not play at the level we were capable in the second half. They did in the first half. This game they were, they were certainly not going to let those guys cross the line of scrimmage. And creating turnovers allowed us to keep them to seven points. So, you know, I feel good about our front seven. I feel good about how our development is on the back end. And I'll take that group anywhere each and every week. Even though you're starting to get a little healthier on the offensive line, or are you content to leave those five guys in there based on, on the success that they've had so far? I mean, you not want to mess with what's working so far? Exactly. <laughs> that's a great question because, you know, we've discussed, uh, and that's a good problem to have because you have other guys pushing. 
You know, so as I tell them all the time, it's not whether you want to start, it's that you prepare and perform like a starter and then you continue being that starter. And I feel like we're meshing together with those five guys. And, uh, you know, and I feel good, you know, if, um, you know, if nothing's broke, you know, why change it? And it hasn't. You know, hasn't created any issues with me uh, personally as head coach. I feel good about those five guys, and I feel good about the other guys that are sitting in position to help us. So uh, we're settling with those five, and uh, we're going to continue that that process right now. Outside of the positive results of the group, how are the two freshman guards handling their first go around so far? Matter of fact, they've graded out very well, um, and it you know, I see it you know when I watch film. And I watch them every play and just the way they're, you know, uh, reacting and, you know, their fundamentals and, you know, their hand placement, their body positioning, how they're finishing, how they're reacting to the way defenses are trying to, you know, defend us. Uh, they've, they've, they've done quite well. Now this week, you know, we've, you know they're a very solid defense, so they're gonna they're gonna present a challenge for our offensive line. They're gonna move their defensive line a lot, and you know so we have to be able to react to their movement. Not so much where they line up in the pre-snap moment, but what happens when the ball snap and the post snap. That's football to me. And uh, so far they've they've done a nice solid job of maintaining good body position and uh, protecting our quarterback and run the ball effectively. Did you help Isaac be back this week? And yeah, he's, uh, you know, right now we feel really good about uh, his progress. He'll be out there practicing today, uh, but we'll probably limit how much contact, you know, he's going to be allowed to, to have today. But, you know, eventually by Saturday we'll have him back. And it was nice to see Okoye Houston, you know. And that's why you develop these guys. We had a practice yesterday, and I said, you know, I want young men that want to play this great game. I want coaches that want to coach. And I want to do it every single day of the week. And so yesterday was huge because we went out there after Saturday's game and we worked with those young kids. You know, we had a scrimmage yesterday with those young guys, executing what we do because that's how you get kids better. That's how you get them ready to play uh, throughout the year. Uh, so when those moments like Isaac went down, that's what we did with I uh, Okoye last year. And so, you know, initially it was like, okay, what do we got to do to get these young kids to play at a higher level. Well, you got to perform, you know, you got to practice them. You got to prep them. You got to develop them. And that's what I want to do 365 days a year with these kids. And, uh, and I think that it's evident by having guys that can step right in and play and you're not missing much. So he's, he's the only guy that yeah. might be questionable. Doc. How close is Reader and all if they're not to get him back? You know, uh, Jake's going to, again, I think hopefully we'll see Jake before the season's over. That's really what our goal is. You know, I can't really say, but he's progressing well. He's out there every day, and every day he's getting better. You know, that's deep into the season. Probably, yeah.